Dee Dee Blanchard was stabbed 17 times in the back while she slept in her bed, the violence so brutal that her head was nearly severed from her body. Dee Dee's daughter, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, orchestrated the murder. She convinced her boyfriend, Nicholas Godijan, to kill her mom, and she stole a knife from Walmart so he could do it. And before the body was cold, they were having sex in the next room. And then, uh, she wanted to have sex with me, so I did. Okay, she wanted to have sex with you? Yes. Okay, and so where'd you guys have sex at? In her Bedroom. Gypsy Rose Blanchard pled guilty to second-degree murder, and after serving 85% of her 10-year prison sentence, she's being paroled in December. The picture I just painted there is clearly a grisly one, but eight years out from the murder with two people behind bars, I still struggle to answer the fundamental question of who the real villain of this story is. Because Gypsy had been the victim of years and years and years of brutal child abuse at the hands of her mother. She is believed to be the victim of perhaps the most infamous case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Gypsy herself even seems to struggle with this same question that a lot of us have about who is the villain. Here is what she told Dr. Phil during a jailhouse interview in 2017. To be honest, I have complicated feelings about that. I believe firmly that no matter what, murder is not okay. But at the same time, I don't believe I deserve as many years as I got. But your mother is dead. She is, yes. And she was murdered. Yes, sir. And you were involved. I was. What would be a just punishment? I'm not really certain on that. I do believe that I do deserve to spend some time in prison. Gypsy Rose was born in 1991 with a litany of medical issues. Her mom said that she delivered her premature, and when Gypsy was just a few months old, she developed sleep apnea. By the time she was a toddler, Gypsy was using a walker due to muscular dystrophy. Dee Dee was visiting countless doctors to treat Gypsy's rare chromosomal disorder. At around seven, Gypsy was forced to use a wheelchair, and she had childhood leukemia. She was also homeschooled due to all of these medical needs. Now, it's unclear when Gypsy stopped attending traditional school. Some reports say as early as kindergarten. Her medical issues just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Vision problems, severe allergies, hearing issues, asthma, seizures. Gypsy was prescribed medication after medication and even underwent multiple surgeries. Because of all the medicine she was taking as well as a procedure to remove her salivary glands due to excessive drooling, Gypsy's teeth rotted. She had all of her teeth pulled and had to get dentures when she was just a teen. Gypsy had no teeth, no hair, big glasses, an oxygen tank, a wheelchair, and she ate through a feeding tube. Now, people were kind to the Blanchards, though. Habitat for Humanity provided them a home in Missouri after they lost their previous residence in Hurricane Katrina. And that was just one of the many nonprofits who opened their coffers for these two. Gypsy got to meet Miranda Lambert through the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and she had several all-expense-paid trips to Disney. Looking at Gypsy really just breaks your heart, and the thought that she would later be convicted of her mother's murder is almost hard to wrap your head around. Until you consider the fact that Gypsy wasn't sick. She never had leukemia, her muscular dystrophy, her potentially fatal allergies, her sleep apnea. She was bald, not because of chemo, but because Dee Dee forced her to shave her head. She also didn't need a wheelchair because Gypsy could walk on her own two feet just fine. And she used to do it in secret until she got caught by her mom. She did a couple times. And what did she say or do? She got so upset with me, she would punish me so bad. Like she started hitting me with a coat hanger and telling me all kinds of mean things. She would tell me that she wished she had an abortion when she had the chance, that I ruined her life that I have no idea how hard it is to keep up everything she built. Feeding tube, the glasses, the surgeries, none of it was medically necessary. Experts believe that Gypsy was the victim of something called factitious disorder imposed on another. I know, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue there, but FDIA was formerly known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy. According to the Cleveland Clinic, it is defined as, quote, a mental illness in which a person acts as if an individual he or she is caring for has a physical or mental illness when the person is not really sick. Dee Dee not only acted as if Gypsy had this laundry list of dire medical ailments, but she actively treated them as if they were real. Now, to be clear here, mental health professionals never actually diagnosed Dee Dee with Munchausen's by proxy, but it's a fact that Gypsy was routinely forced to undergo unnecessary medical treatments for sicknesses she didn't have. Tests repeatedly showed that she didn't have sleep apnea or cancer or muscular dystrophy, and when the doctors told Dee Dee, she would leave and find another doctor. Dee Dee managed to secure unnecessary prescriptions and procedures 
by detailing symptoms that Gypsy just didn't have. She conveniently misplaced prior medical records and sometimes would even drug her daughter to mimic those symptoms. As I mentioned earlier, Gypsy had had her salivary glands surgically removed to correct excessive drooling. She didn't have a drooling problem though. Dee Dee used to numb her gums before going to the doctors to essentially force her to drool. And the worst part about all of this, Gypsy didn't have a clue that she wasn't actually sick until she caught pretty old. We don't know exactly when though because Dee Dee regularly made her out to be younger than she was. Gypsy believed she was 14 when she was really 18. In 2011, Gypsy met a boy at a sci-fi convention. She was attending with her mom and fed up with her life at this point. She tried to make a break for it. But Dee Dee managed to find these two and she threatened to report the guy to the police because Gypsy was a minor. She was actually 19 at the time. According to Gypsy, because of this incident, she was severely punished strained to her bed, refused food, and threatened by her mom. Later on, Gypsy met another boy on a Christian dating site, and this would change her life forever. Gypsy and Nicholas Godijan developed a relationship, and by this time, the jig was up. She knew what her mother was doing to her. Now, at one point, she managed to meet up with Nicholas in person at a movie theater. Gypsy, who was obsessed with Disney, convinced her mom to take her to see the live-action Cinderella movie. Nick also arranged to go to the same showing. Now she was dressed like a Disney princess. She went to the bathroom alone and met up with Nick in the handicap stall. And that's where Gypsy had sex for the first time. We got to see each other in person for the first time. Did it come physical that night? Yes. And you know what I mean by physical, don't you? Yes. What do I mean? He had sexual relations. And where? In the bathroom stall, in the men's bathroom. At the time of the murders, Gypsy and Nick had been carrying on a secret long distance relationship online for about three years. He was 26 and she was 23, but Nick has autism and a very low IQ. According to his lawyers, his mental capacity is more like that of a 10 year old. Gypsy was just desperate to get out from her mother's thumb and she concocted a plan for the two of them to run away together. And part of that plan, including Nick killing her mom. Who talked you into killing your mother? I did. I talked him into it. I was growing increasingly desperate to get out of my home life. And did you tell Nick that? Yes. And what was your mom doing that caused you to be more desperate? Things were getting physically and more physically abusive. The hitting was more. The starving was more. Gypsy Rose stole a knife from Walmart and gave it to her boyfriend along with duct tape and gloves. And while her mom was asleep in bed, Gypsy hid in the bathroom so she didn't have to see or hear the killing. Here is what Nick told investigators happened next. So Gypsy knew you were gonna do it because Gypsy asked you to. Yeah. Do you know how many times you stabbed her? Uh, four. You stabbed her four? Yeah, four times. Did she scream or holler or? Yeah, she did. What was she saying? Uh, First she said help, and then she didn't know, she didn't recognize who I was. Now, Nick has said that it was really his dark alter ego named Victor who did the stabbing. Afterwards, he and Gypsy together cleaned up, and then they went to her room to have sex. Now, Godijan told police that it was Gypsy who was the one who wanted to have intercourse, and that they engaged in oral, vaginal, and anal sex in her bedroom. And what kind of sex? What, what is sex like to you? Well, well to me, uh, you know, the kind of sex that it was, it was pretty much, uh, although 100% consensual is what okay. I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay. Because um, she, uh, at, obviously I was the one that was in charge, but she went along with it willingly. Gypsy would later call that experience rape, telling Dr. Phil that at that point she wasn't even sure if her mom was still alive. During Godijan's trial, however, she admitted that it began consensually. Troubling Facebook posts are what alerted neighbors that something was wrong at the Blanchard house that night, namely this one. Quote, I f***ing slashed that fat pig and raped her sweet daughter. Her scream was so f***ing loud, LOL. Gypsy later copped to writing that post herself. Now at the time you have to remember, everybody in the community believed that Gypsy was this frail, mentally disabled, really sick girl. Her medications and her wheelchair were found inside the home where Dee Dee's body was discovered, so the initial thought was Gypsy had been abducted by whomever had murdered her mom. While cops investigated, Gypsy and Nick had absconded to a motel for a few days before they took a bus to his family home in Wisconsin. His mom was the one who actually picked them up from the bus station. 
They also mailed the murder weapon to his home so that if they were caught on the way, they wouldn't have it on them. A neighbor who Gypsy confided in knew all about Godejan's existence, and she told police who quickly figured out who he was and where he lived. Cops in Wisconsin arrested the pair, and they were extradited to Missouri to face murder charges. But because this case was so complicated with that added element of this child abuse, the prosecutor thought there was a good chance a jury might have sympathized too much with Gypsy, so they offered her a plea deal. She pled guilty to a lesser charge, second-degree murder, and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Now, despite the fact that Gypsy told the jury during Nick's trial that she was the one who planned the killing and she was the one who convinced him to carry it out, and despite his attorney's efforts to paint him as a mentally challenged boy who thought that this was the only way to save his girlfriend, Nick Godejan was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. During her time behind bars, for lack of a better word, Gypsy's been kind of thriving. She's even said that being in actual prison was an improvement to the prison of her mother's making. She told 2020, quote, in some ways they're the same, but now I'm so much more freer. The prison I was living in before with my mom was like I couldn't walk, I couldn't eat, I couldn't have friends. Over here, I feel like I'm freer in prison than living with my mom. I can live like a normal woman. While carrying out her sentence, she did really live like a normal woman. She even got engaged several times to different men and married one of them. In 2022, Gypsy reportedly married a man named Ryan Scott Anderson and then divorced him four months later. But in less than three months, Gypsy will learn what real freedom feels like. The Missouri Department of Corrections recently announced that she was being paroled. Gypsy will be released on December 28th. For more true crime content like this, hit like and subscribe.